The Los Angeles Rams have one of the most talented teams in the entire NFC. With a good mix of young players who are helping this team win now that pair alongside a lot of older veterans, this team has built together a roster that can seriously compete today. But with a couple reasons to be cautious on this Rams team, today let's talk about why I think the Los Angeles Rams might be one of the biggest sleepers in the NFC. So in this video, we are going to be breaking this down into three different segments per usual. We'll start off with talking about what I like about this Rams team and things that make this team a potential sleeper. Then we'll talk about the opposite things that maybe make me a little bit less optimistic about this roster and then at the very end i'll give you guys my unofficial consensus and synopsis on this rams team let's begin so to begin this video per usual i want to talk about the general death chart and the general personnel on this roster because as i mentioned in the intro this team has a lot of young players who pair nicely alongside a bunch of older veterans Last year's draft was a revolutionary draft, and I do believe that this year's draft will also be even more so of a revolutionary draft for this team. In last year's draft, they were able to pull some guys like Puka Nakua and a bunch of other players to help this team compete for a championship right away. And then in this year's draft, they were able to add guys like Jared Verse and a multitude of other young players who I think are also going to help this team win now. And with a fairly aggressive offseason to fix some of their general issues, I think this roster in general is very talented. Looking at the offense, you obviously have Matthew Stafford, who is one of the most underrated but also properly rated quarterbacks it just seems to be kind of dependent on the person you're talking about like what i mean by that is that i think that matthew stafford is easily a top 10 quarterbacks but for some reason i consistently see other people saying he's not even a top 10 quarterback which is just crazy but you pair a veteran like matthew stafford with another veteran like cooper cup and that relationship has really become something that is super fun to watch and you also pair those two veterans with young guys like kyron williams puka nakua jonah jackson steven avila and then those younger guys are also paired with older guys like Rob Havenstein and Kevin Dotson. And I think all in all, because this team has a good mix of young and older guys, it really makes this team a really fun team to watch and a team that is really competitive. Because offensively speaking, there really is not a general way that you can stop the Rams. When you have two stars like Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup who can play both on the outside and the inside and give them a guy like Matthew Stafford who can just dissect defenses with his eyes, it really does create what is basically an unstoppable offense. And when this team goes out there and adds guys like Jonah Jackson and keeps guys like Kevin Dotson and Steve Avila continues to develop and you can give those offense alignment a running back combination of Kyron William and the newly drafted Blake Corum this offense just became even more unstoppable and as long as health does not become an issue for this team you're really not going to find a team that's going to be able to consistently stop this Rams team in fact I honestly think the only thing that stops this Rams offense is just going to be themselves if they have a bunch of turnover issues and if the coaching kind of lets them down which I don't expect at all then they think this offense will be just fine and I think defensively they've done a fantastic fantastic job of building out this roster through the draft and through free agency. I will say this now, I love this defensive line from top to bottom. It is probably one of my favorite defensive lines in the entire NFL. Because defensive line wise, they had my two favorite defensive linemen in this year's draft with Jared Verse and Braden Fisk. I didn't make a video and I wish I did, but if I would have had a video of the my guys of this year's draft, I think Jared Verse and Braden Fisk might be the one and two. You get both of those Florida State guys on one defense and pair them up with guys like Kobe Turner and Byron Young. I am sold. That is going to be an awesome and youthful defensive line. That's going to be super scary for every team to watch. Now, obviously, those guys are not going to be relied upon in their rookie and sophomore and younger seasons to put together a 10 sack season for each player but i would not be shocked in the slightest that this team at some point in this season is a top five team in sacks at the end of the year i'm super high on this defensive line and i truly do believe it is one of the younger and more exciting defensive lines that we're going to see in quite some time but that's not the only thing i like about this defense they did a good job of finding some order and younger guys to fill out the secondary i wouldn't say it's a perfect secondary because i do have a couple issues with their cornerback room especially with Tredavious white's injury history but you get a veteran like trey white and pair him up with guys like Darius Williams and Kobe Durant and of course your safety duo is going to be Cameron Kitchens and potentially Cameron Curl and I think that's a pretty solid secondary all around again a youthful secondary with a bunch of younger players paired up with some veterans on that in that defensive back room we'll talk a little bit later about why I don't love the cornerback room but I think it is a youthful room that I think does give me a little bit of excitement about that group next thing I think that really makes this team a sleeper in this year's NFC is going to be the fact that they have a top 10 quarterback and a top 10 head coach Whenever you have that head coach and quarterback combination down to a T with good chemistry, and of course, when there are two potential Hall of Famers, then that's going to make this team scary for any team out there. You look at a lot of the top teams in the past several years, whether it was the Kansas City Chiefs or the New England Patriots, 
Those were teams that had two positions down to a T, the quarterback room and, of course, the head coach, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Matthew Stafford, and Sean McVay. Those guys have obviously won a championship to get together, so they know what it takes to get to that spot, and they have the personnel, in my opinion, to get to that spot yet again. When you have an offense that is as loaded as theirs to go along with the chemistry that this offense has, has with their quarterback and with their offensive coordinator slash head coach. You're talking about a team that can compete with quite literally anybody, even if they're in a talent deficit. Even if they're in a talent deficit. So while I see a lot of people underestimating this Rams team, I think this team should be freaking awesome next year because of all the talent on this roster and the significant change they added on the defense. But we talked about the good. Now let's talk about the bad. We'll start off with some personnel issues I don't like about this roster next year, but of course those can be fixed. And then we'll talk about more of the bigger picture things, things that aren't necessarily within their control. We'll start off with the personnel, as I said, and my biggest question for this team is going to stick here on the defense with the linebacking room. Right now, your technical inside linebackers are going to be Ernest Jones and Christian Rosenbaum, Christian Roseboom. And while I don't really view those guys as particularly bad per se, I do just generally wonder if the upside of those guys can match the upside of some of the other positions. For every single team, they're always going to have a weaker point. And I don't necessarily view as having as this team having necessarily a weak point within the linebacking room but i just wonder if those guys can up their level of play to match what i be, what i personally believe this defensive line is going to be able to do to me the mix of a good defense is when your linebacking core and your front four guys all have great talent distribution that can equally make both sides good for example, what I mean by that is a team like Baltimore, who last year the defensive line was just as good as their linebacking core, so that front seven was generally just unstoppable. And I don't know quite yet if those linebackers are going to match what I believe this defensive line can. Now again, I don't think this is the worst linebacking room in the world, but I do think that there is some potential room for growth in that room. And then as I talked about earlier, I'm not necessarily quite sold yet on this defensive back room, mainly within the cornerback room. Obviously, a lot of it is dependent on Tredavious's white on Tredavious White's health and what he can end up being for this team next year. But outside of Trey White, I'm just not quite sold yet on Kobe Durant and Darius Williams. Yes, they're young guys and yes, they're going to continue to develop, but I just don't know if I've seen enough quite yet. You do have a couple other younger guys behind those guys, but those are the main guys who I think are going to get the majority of the playing time. And I am very intrigued to see if those guys can develop into being the cornerback two and three to surround Trey White, who I imagine will probably be the cornerback one. Again, last year, the secondary was a bit of an issue for this team, but they did get some upgrades with guys like Cameron Curl and Tredavious White, who I do feel like are going to help this secondary out a ton. But I would imagine in next year's draft or next year's free agency, they might want to look to target a serious counter, a serious young cornerback one to replace a guy who's a little bit older in Tredavious White, who we just have a lot of questions about today. But again, I don't really view it as that big of a deal because I do think that this secondary is good enough to at least get the job done. But now looking more at the broader picture of this Rams team and just sort of talking about things that are a bit out of the control of the Rams. And for me, the biggest question I have about this roster is, can they seriously compete with the San Francisco 49ers? Because I know the 49ers have had their fair share of issues this offseason because they've had a couple of trade requests and they just generally haven't gotten that much better. But in totality, I still view that team as being one of the teams to beat in the NFC. And while I do think the Rams could keep the games competitive against them, I just don't know quite yet if they're going to be good enough to beat those teams. Because like I said, I think they'll be competitive with basically everybody they face this, uh, this upcoming season. But can they get over the guys that represented the NFC in last year's Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers? one of the hardest teams and best teams in the NFL. And it also doesn't help that this Rams team has what is, in my opinion, a pretty tough schedule. Let's go ahead and break down their schedule. For starters, their first five games are against, are against three NFC North teams, which in my opinion is probably the best division in the NFL. You have the Lions week one, which should be an awesome game, by the way. But Detroit, in my opinion, is one of the hardest teams in the NFL, and I truly do believe they have a good chance to make the Super Bowl next year. Then you have Arizona in week two, which I like Arizona and I think they're talented, but that should probably be a win. Then you have San Francisco, Chicago, and Green Bay. Obviously, I talked about the 49ers. That is going to be a super tough and fun game to watch. But Chicago and Green Bay are two super competitive teams that I can view them as playoff teams next year, especially Green Bay. They're probably a lock for the playoffs. Then you have a week six bye week, which in my opinion is criminal. NFL, please stop giving early bye weeks. I think that is absolutely ridiculous. Then after the bye week, you have a stretch of the Raiders, the Vikings, the Seahawks, and the Miami Dolphins. I do think those are very winnable games for this team. I do believe that Las Vegas, Minnesota, and Seattle will all be better teams next year, but I still view, I still think the Rams are a better roster overall. Then after Miami, you have the Patriots, easy W. Then you have the Philadelphia Eagles, could be a bit of a toss-up. Then you have the Saints, should be a win. Buffalo, San Francisco, New York, three brutal games in a row. Those are all going to be fun games to watch, and I just don't know if that team can win those games. 
I do think they'll at least win one of those games regardless though. And then you end the season off with Arizona and Seattle. Again, pretty winnable games there. So we talked about the good, we talked about some bad things, but what do I think this LA Rams team can actually do? Because as I mentioned, schedule's pretty tough next year and it won't be easy, but I still think this team is gonna be very freaking awesome next year. So for 2024, here's my sort of synopsis and consensus. This is not gonna be my official take yet. We'll talk about more of an official take later in the off season, but I do have this team winning at least 10 games next year, if not more. And I, if I had to guess, they'll probably win more than 10 games because the roster is super loaded with young talent. And as long as there's not any sort of big decline from guys like Puka Nakua and some of the young guys in the defense, I do view this team as a Rams team that has super high upside. Again, I've heard a lot of people not have the Rams in their playoffs, and I think that is a little bit of a ridiculous take because I think this Rams team is way too talented to miss the playoffs. They will be in the playoffs and they'll be super competitive and potentially give themselves a chance to make the Super Bowl. I'll hold off from a Super Bowl prediction quite right now, but I do think this Rams team is going to be awesome. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button, and I love you guys. Peace.